In the book of, of Revelation, chapter 2, John records these words from our resurrected Lord Jesus. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardship for my name, and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, it will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Don't worry, you haven't missed anything. We're still in the book of Acts, chapter 20, in fact. I, I just thought it would be helpful if we fast forwarded a bit. Paul visited the elders of the Ephesian church in Miletus, likely in 57 or 58 A.D., there's some division on this, but scholars suggest that John, the beloved disciple, received his revelation on Patmos anytime from 67 to sometime in the 90s AD. Now, clearly, things had changed. Even by the time of Paul's second letter to Timothy, who seems to be the head pastor of sorts over the churches in Ephesus, we read of the, the presence of false teachers in their midst. Their teaching will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenaeus and Philetus, who have departed from the truth. They say that the resurrection has already taken place, and they destroy the faith of some. Paul's warning in Acts to the elders that savage wolves would come in among them. Even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. It's born fruit. That is, in his speech, Paul was right. There was danger on the horizon. Now, we don't know if he was speaking prophetically or, or just words of wisdom and experience. The trouble is coming. What strikes me is that by the time John penned his letter to the seven churches, false teachers had indeed sown their seeds in Ephesus to great effect. We don't know what be, would be entailed by removing their lampstand, but it doesn't sound promising. And all of this, I hope you don't miss, that, that the most sinister form of, of false teaching was not that one would suggest Jesus an angel or, or some lesser divinity, to suggest some alternate timeline for the resurrection or pretending to any other form of secret knowledge. Those were dangerous, but perhaps not likely to, to take deep root. The false teaching that was most pernicious then is the same as it is today. It's one which leads to orthodox belief, but calcified hearts. Whoever these false teachers were, they had infiltrated the church in Ephesus and they had led disciples to follow after them. Disciples who knew all of the right answers, called out the false teachers for who they were, yet when it came down to it, their hearts felt very little for their Lord. How many Christians in the American church today have minds filled with information, but hearts devoid of affection? Disciples that, excuse me, discipleship that only touches one's mind, leaving one's heart unmoved is not discipleship to our Lord. If you find yourself in a place where your mind is filled, but your heart has cooled, do as John suggests. Repent. Do the things you did at first. In other words, do that thing which began your relationship with our Lord. Ask for forgiveness. For as Jesus suggests in the story of the woman who washed his feet with her tears, our love for him is a, a reflection of the forgiveness with which uh, the forgiveness which we have received. May you be reminded of all that He's done for you, and that inspire new gratitude and rekindled love. Have a blessed week.